Welcome to Mother Daughter Projects. I'm Steph. I'm Vicki. And today we're in my backyard and we're going to share how we put together this modern resin shed. A little while back, my dad got a bike and it's been sitting in our garage workshop here at mom's house a little too long. So that's what pushed us over the edge to get this shed. And we're going to put his bike in it, but other things as well. So we actually ordered this from Costco. We ordered it online and it was delivered right where we wanted it. And it's been perfect. Now the instructions to assemble this shed are really, really good. But there are a few things that we thought should be in there. And we will be sharing those tips throughout the entire build. All right, let's get started. The hardest part of building a shed like this is preparing the site. Knowing that, we picked a spot on the concrete patio and mom started by blowing the leaves away. We started by ripping open the box as we couldn't find the open me starting point. We took out each piece and started to inventory what we had. We made sure to keep all the small pieces together to avoid losing anything and look through the manual. I grabbed some cups to put the smaller screws in. I laid out the base pieces to designate the build spot to make sure all the other materials did not crowd this area. We inventoried all the pieces by mom reading out the parts and I put them in place. Next, we gathered the tools that were listed on the front of the manual. And then we took it all to our work spot. The first step was to add two attachments to the front door and I'm securing the top one here and off camera I secured the bottom one. Next we added the windows to the top pieces. The first step was to add the gasket and one note here is the manual does not mention to cut off the excess gasket but it is necessary. Also the manual doesn't mention it but you need to remove the protective film on both sides of the plexiglass then screw it into place. We repeated the same process for the rest of the windows. One thing to note here, the manual says to use a hand screwdriver to drive all the screws in this build, but no one has time for that. So we use a power screwdriver called the Dremel Go, being careful not to over tighten or strip the screws. This tool is a great solution as it's less powerful than a drill driver and it also is way faster than a manual screwdriver. The next step is to add some of the metal framing to the top window, which we're doing here. Most of this build uses the same screws, which is nice so you don't have to hunt around for different screws. Here we're adding some metal framing to the back top. Next we added four screws to attach the base pieces together. Now on to the main structure. We attach the corner and left wall into the bottom grooves, and we use the included plastic screws to secure the pieces together. The walls slip into place, and to get them started, we use a rubber mallet. This process is very straightforward, but I would definitely recommend a buddy. Here's a close-up of the screw in the plastic tool that it comes with to secure them to the walls. You can see here that each of the panels were clearly labeled with a name and letter so you could easily identify each part. With all the walls in place, we moved on to adding the top windows. Again, secure with the included screws. And now onto the metal supports. Here I'm adding the support to the front inside. They don't go all the way to the floor and there are corresponding holes in the plastic so you know exactly where they go.
the side support actually slip in from the top so you need to make sure that you have nothing covering the structure at this point so you can get the support in. Another note on the side rails, the very bottom hole did not line up with the hole in the plastic, but it was very easy to screw right through the plastic even though there wasn't a hole there already. Here is the top brace and I'm securing it with a bolt and nut. And these right here, this was the hardest thing to attach. I will say the manual says this will be difficult, but screwing metal screws into a metal part is really difficult and it took me a really long time to do. If I was to do this again, I would have attached these three metal pieces while it was still on the ground as there's really no reason that I have to attach them once it's up on the roof. I finally gave up and for the last two, I used an impact driver to get them into place. I did strip the screw just a little bit, but I was way over it at this point and I didn't care. A big thing to note, the manual says to fully secure these, but here in this next step, as I'm adding the cross pieces, I'm finding that the holes don't line up and ultimately had to unscrew the middle braces just a little bit to get the holes lined up. So don't fully tighten those brackets until the next step. All these metal pieces get connected with nuts and bolts, which you can see I'm doing here. The locking wrench I'm using here is called a Robo Grip, and we've been using these for years and we always find uses for them. You can find them on Amazon, and by far they are the best locking wrench we've ever used. And now onto the roof, which is very needed as it's really hot and the sun has been directly over us for way too long. The roof just slides easily into place and now all the metal pieces got screwed onto the roof. I'm starting with the front window and one thing to note here, the spot where you're supposed to screw into, they're not pre-drilled in the plastic, but it was easy enough just to screw right through with the Dremel Go. And each of these three ceiling supports get 12 screws. And the last step is the doors. The hinges slide into place and a nut and bolt secure them to the shed. And then I just placed the front hardware which uses carriage bolts and nuts, which I'm attaching right here. And lastly, the handles screw into place. What we learned. This build took us about five hours to do, so about half a day. Um, if I was to do it again, I probably would have broken it up between two days because when I was working in the heat, it was it was not so great. So I probably would have done it over two two mornings, but it came together really nicely. The manual seems a little daunting at first. You're like, oh, there's a lot of steps, but it really wasn't too bad once you get into it. It's very straightforward. And again, like mom said, the manual was really well written. And the price of this was right under $800, which seemed really reasonable, especially after we got it and realized how well it was put together. It's not included, but there is a place to add a padlock to add more security to your shed and we're also installing a wise outdoor camera again for a little bit more security. Now you're probably going to notice in the corner we actually have the manual in a plastic bag put up in the corner just if we need to reference it in the future. We also downloaded the PDF of the manual and we put it on our Dropbox where we have all of our digital manuals. It's really important to note that these resin sheds really need a firm foundation. That's why this concrete pad is really the perfect choice. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and be sure to subscribe and click the bell notification be alerted to all our new videos. Thanks for joining us. Yay. Bye. Try to knock it in places. Ow! <laughs> Thank you for the encouragement. <laughs>